Hey everybody, this is Chad Jordan. I'm the Director of Marketing for Digital Services here at Sport Clips. This is another edition of our Hall of Fame podcast. Excited because for the first time, uh, we are also doing this as a video on YouTube. So uh, welcome to all our YouTube viewers and subscribers. Glad to have you. Uh, but uh, real excited because of who I have as a guest today. Why don't I have him introduce himself? Hey everybody, it's uh, Duke Sorensen. I'm the area developer for Sport Clips out here in Utah and Idaho, and uh, I've been doing this for about, man, 15 years, Chad, and uh, having a ball, just yeah. having a ball. We're, we're going to get it. We're going to get into a lot of that. Uh, we are actually filming this in beautiful Austin area, Georgetown, Texas, and I've been freezing because it's in the 40s and 50s <laughs> here, and you're wearing shorts, a short sleeve shirt, you know, you came in. Uh, all sweating because you woke up yesterday and it was in the teens, I'm sure, in Utah. Or... Oh, yeah, it's been freezing out there. We, we, we're we at 15, 20 degrees out there when we wake up in the morning and uh, get about 30, 35 in the day. Yeah, so. It takes a, it takes especially tough kind of people to be able to do that, so God bless you. <laughs> so I, uh, we're going to get into a lot of stuff today, a lot, of, especially culture, uh, you know, what's working for you guys out in Utah and Idaho. One of the things that I want to get... Uh, to right away is you, you said area developer yes uh, describe what that is you know we have people that will listen to this watch this that uh, might be familiar with sport clips might not be or might be familiar with sport clips and don't know what AD does so can you kind of give me a rundown on what that what that's all about oh yeah you bet so I basically am responsible to develop out the area of Utah and Idaho I help new uh, team leaders which are our owners of the stores uh, get involved get them trained, uh, get their stores open, help them look for real estate, uh, all of those things uh, to, to grow the area. Started out with one store in my area, uh, now have opened, oh wow, we're at 44. Wow. As of tomorrow, we're opening a store in Park City tomorrow, mm -hmm. so yeah. And do you, as an AD, do you, are you also a team leader? How does that uh, relationship work? Yeah, as an AD, um, we uh, are required to have one store ourselves, mm -hmm. but I actually own five at this point, and uh, it's it's been a great experience. Uh, we're able to uh, help a lot of people and and uh, do a lot of fun things with our teams. So. Yeah, you and you have such a fun market. Where we're definitely going to get into uh, to some of that stuff. Having traveled there, uh, last time I was there, I mentioned I've been there more than I have any other markets, which makes sense to have you uh, as a guest here and for the first guest ever as a video on YouTube. But so we're, we're gonna talk about your market, we're gonna talk about some of the fun things that you guys do culturally uh, that you do with your stores and, and with the, uh, the other stores around there. But uh, one thing that I, I'm interested in finding out about you is, so you said 15 years, you're at least 15 years old, maybe a little bit older. So <laughs> what, what were you doing right before Sport Clips? What, what kind of got you to this place where you woke up one day and said, hey, I think Sport Clips might be a, uh, a good option for me. How, how did you get here? What were you doing? What led you to here? Yeah, well, I, uh, I actually was a manager of a boat dealership for about 13 or 14 years. Uh, and in the Utah area? In Salt the Utah Lake City area? area. Yep. Okay. Yeah, uh, we actually had two locations out there and, and was doing that. And, and we actually sold the business. Uh, and I worked for the new people for a little while and just hated it. I've always wanted to own my own thing, mm -hmm. be my own boss. And I actually went to work for a business brokerage that sold the business. And right then is when Dick Mueller came in, who is uh, one of the sales guys for Sport Clips at that time. And he told us about this new concept coming out, uh, which was, this was back in about 2003. I was say early, or early O's, early aughts. Yeah, yeah. early mm -hmm. aughts. And uh, uh, he told us about this uh, new concept, and I absolutely loved it because I hated getting my hair cut at all those other places. Yeah. It just... I just hated it. It was terrible, the experience. Um, and so I went and checked this place out. We had one open in Utah. Uh, Nancy Vandiver oh, was... Oh, Nancy. Okay, yeah, I didn't know Nancy. what Nancy had there. It's yeah. okay. Nancy was uh, uh, a team leader out there that owned uh, a particular store, and it was the only one opened out here in the West at all. Um, and she actually worked for corporate and just flew into Austin here. I was here, say, yeah. Did training and stuff like that for quite a while. She's been with Gordon for a long yep. time. And... Uh, Went there and had a phenomenal experience right out of the gate. And so you was, went as kind of a client, kind of to yeah. experience it and get the uh, firsthand kind of view of 
of what it would like be like to get your hair cut there and think if I will like it, enjoy it, I bet others will. And so I should, this should be kind of the place for me. Is that yeah, I was, the I, thought process? I mean, I was looking for a business to buy or something to start. Uh, I had no clue I would get into this business. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't even on the radar. I didn't even think about this business. I uh, went to check it out just to see if I could sell some franchises for the company and fell in love with the idea and man, the rest is history from there. I, yeah. We fairly quickly got it all taken care of, locked down and got started on things and it's been a whirlwind ever since. So. Well, isn't, is it, is it safe to say now it's kind of the family business? I mean, it's oh, not like you're, that. so, so can you talk me through that and, uh, you know, who, who else in the family is involved with sport clips and, and, uh, and what, what, uh, what they're doing with the business? Yeah. So I, my, uh, my daughter, Kayla, um, who is my second oldest child, I have four kids. Mm -hmm. She came out of uh, school and wanted to be a stylist and she decided, and this is how many years ago? Oh, wow. This was back in about 2005. Okay, probably. so you had already gotten your feet wet with Sport Clips, yes. right? Yeah, I okay. just opened my first store. Uh, your own store. My own store, yeah. uh, which was the second store in Utah. Uh, and all of the time we're trying to open other stores and get other team leaders on and stuff. Well, my daughter decides that she wants to be a stylist, and so she's going to school. So we hired her as a receptionist. Mm -hmm. And it worked out perfectly. The team that I had there were, were awesome. They took her under their wing. They taught her as much as she learned in school, you know, by, by learning and working with the girls. And uh, she was ready to come on the floor uh, right after she graduated. And she, she, so she started as a receptionist. She worked her way up. Uh, we gave her the manager position of that store a few years later. She turned that store from doing um, oh, it was probably 300 haircuts a week uh, to doing uh, seven, 800 wow. haircuts in like a year and a half. Wow. She just really did a great and job. And it's not like 300 is a shabby number. But no, she, 300 is a she, good number. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah that, to, go, to double that. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So she, she did a great job on that store. And uh, a little later, we decided to make her the area coach. And mm -hmm. so she now uh, goes around, opens stores with me, does training, um, is over all of the other coaches that I have in the area that do training and things. Uh, and she's kind of my right-hand person. I get to travel with her all the time yeah. and stuff. So it's great. It's, it is a family. And she's business. Can, keeping the tradition. She's having kids now that are going to eventually be in the family business, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, I should have brought my, uh, my little granddaughter, Quinn. Uh, we, we made her a little hoodie. Right mm -hmm. after she was born, that says on the back of it, Sport Clip Styles okay. and Training. I, I love it. And it looks really cute on yeah. her, so yeah. <laughs> uh, so what have been, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask two-pronged question here. The first, I, I want to talk about your experience with Sport Clips uh, once you got here 15 years ago. And the, the questions are going to go this way. First, what were some of the major challenges that you experienced coming into a market for the first time, really owning your own business for the first time uh, in, in a capacity like that, that you had to overcome? What some of the challenges and how did you, how'd you, how'd you make it through them? Well, some of the biggest challenges were we weren't known at that point. Uh, okay. We were really a, a young company. It was not in all 50 states no, by any stretch of the imagination. Not by any, any means. And you would tell people where you worked and they said, what? Mm -hmm. Who was, who's that? Yeah. You know, now when I tell people where I, I'm at, they go, oh, I love that place. Yeah. I, I go there. My kids go there, you know. Um, but that was probably the biggest challenge is getting the word out to people as well as stylists. Finding really good stylists is difficult. Mm -hmm. And when they don't know who you are or or what you're all about or what your culture's like or any of that kind of thing, they're a little hesitant to, to come over. And so you have to slowly win them over and and work on getting the, the word out to the clients that you're around and this is what you do. Well, We're different than everybody. You, you, know? you had two major challenges, marketing and stylists. So what did you do first, marketing? How did you, how'd you start getting the word out when there wasn't a national ad fund campaign really helping you or kicking down all these uh, all these options your way. You know, guerrilla marketing was the number one thing by far. Yeah. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world. In fact, today, probably still is. Yeah. My five stores, I do it all the time. Okay. Uh, it's, what are some What are some really of the things important. that have worked that you've seen 
over the last decade plus work for you? Some of my favorites are, I like to get out as many coupons with as little effort as possible. Mm -hmm. So just taking the stuff that Sport Clips came up with right out of the gate, uh, we'll go to a pizza joint, Domino's or somebody like that, and talk the manager into putting them on all the pizza boxes Ooh. that are getting delivered. I mean, they deliver hundreds of pizzas right. every week. Uh, dry cleaners are another place that works really well. You can staple them to the dry cleaning bag. Uh, you know, proms and, and all of those kind of things. You think about times when people are getting their hair cut. Yeah. And it's really about getting people to understand how different we are than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because we're not just another haircutting place. And we have much bigger hook towards guys that, than anybody else does. So when they figure it out and they see it, it's kind of a no-brainer for most of them. And, and they absolutely love it when they come in. So, uh, and the the other challenge, the the stylist, the recruiting, yeah. you know, besides convincing, brainwashing, whatever you had to do <laughs> to get your kids to to want to be stylists. What what else have you seen work uh, for for finding? Because you're right, it's not just about getting any stylist; it's getting the best stylist to work at Sport Clips, which is certainly what what we have. So, how does how do you do that? Well, certainly back then, the big issue was trying to get people to understand who we are and who, what we're about. Um, it was the first company that I had really seen that believed in their mission statement and their values. Mm -hmm. uh, most people have it up on their wall behind their cash register, and you ask the guy about it, and they go, what's, oh, I didn't yeah. even know that was There's there. There's dust you on know, the frame, dust right, on yeah. The frame and, and things. This particular company, that was one of the things that attracted me to them is, is they really do live the values. They, they love uh, the culture and creating that fun place to work and something different. Uh, and that's really what, what drew me to it. And that, that was the answer to finding stylist is mm -hmm. show them what culture we want to build and build it. Mm -hmm. Figure out something that they want that's different for them than they've ever seen. Um, you know, most of the things I heard when I very first got into the business was, yeah, I worked for a place and it was owned by some doctor or some dentist and I didn't even know the guy's name. Right. I, I just saw it on a paycheck every once in a while yeah. and I had no idea who it was. Well, we're so far from that, it's not even funny. Um, all of our owners are a lot more engaged. We know every one of our stylists. Mm -hmm. uh, we do things with them and have a good time. I, I think it was really important. I, I really think that the culture is what really changed it and brought people into us. Uh, and I, I'm, I don't want to table culture because it might be the answer to the second prong of this, of this question. And, and the, the, the next part I had was, what, what, what have been some of the biggest changes you've seen over the last 15 years as you've come in, now you've built the market out, you've seen it kind of grow. What have been some of the things that you've seen uh, take place? So this, this comes back to something, Chad, that's, that's kind of hits close to my heart and close to me is when I first got into the industry, I saw so much opportunity because there was a, there was a group of people here that are really hardworking. Uh, lots of them are single moms. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're living on next to nothing, you know, um, and and they just, the, the wages were seven, eight bucks an hour, mm -hmm. okay, when I, when I first started out. And I was hearing some of my friends that were getting into businesses, and we have a lot of tech companies in Utah, and, and these tech companies would take their employees all out to a movie, and they'd, they'd rent the movie theater, and they'd do these really cool, fun things. Yeah. And I wanted to do that. I, I, you know, I didn't want to be the one going to the movies. I wanted to be the one that actually built this yeah. and, and took them to to have fun and do some things. And I also wanted to help them out because financially they're really struggling. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, I knew that we could do better than that. And we got it and now we're, shoot, uh, we're $10 an hour base. My average stylist makes uh, 20, $21 an hour. Wow. So it's huge. Where we've gone from where we were. Do you we have a resume that I could, uh, yeah. or have a job application that I could put in? Uh, or... Nobody wants you to. Come yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. no that's, the, and I mean, especially, I mean, early on, 2007, 2008, 2009, when the recession's hitting, you're yeah. seeing all of that. And so for you to recognize, they're, they're, we got to, 
you know, do something better and, and get these people to a, a great wage. Well, and the thing that I liked, Gordon would always push that. Every, every time something came up, he figured a good way, a good way to help people. Uh, just coming up with some of the funds that we do, uh, the Wayne McGlone fund and mm -hmm. things, is huge in the industry. Nobody does those kind yeah. of things. Um, and that's the kind of company I wanted to be a part of and actually help create and, and do, because it's not always about the money. You know, the money will come. It, it's about helping people and getting them what they want. The old Zig Ziglar uh, yeah. adage, you know, get enough, have enough people, help enough people get what they want and you'll get what you yeah. want and uh, things. I, I firmly believe that and, and, it's, and it's worked, you know. So you're one of the things, and I knew we'd circle back to culture <laughs> uh, because I said, what, what have you seen change in the last 15 years? And that's really where you, you started to go with uh, that you, you, you didn't want to be attending the movie premiere with the rest. You wanted to be the one putting that all together and bringing your teams together. So can you, because I think you are such a culture leader and you guys do such an amazing job. Can you give me just a glimpse of some of the things that you guys do for fun? We'll get into Help a Hero in just a second, but some of the things you do as a market or maybe as a team leader for, you, for your group of stores that, uh, that other stores or other markets could benefit from if they also did it. Yeah, we, we've tried to do things as a group as much as possible when we go to uh, our huddles, our national conventions, okay. mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, whatever city we're in, we find something fun to do with the teams. So my group last year is about 75, 80 people, and we were down in San Antonio. and uh, Had the best jackets oh, of yeah. anybody oh, of course. At, at huddle. No. <laughs> um, we... Uh, we actually went and uh, did a Segway tour with all of us. Oh, wow. And so we, riding on the little... Riding on yeah. the Segways. Went all over the city, and we had they had to bring in Segways. We had, I think, about 65 of us all on Segways at one time down in the uh, down, downtown San I missed Tony. this social media video. Now I'm upset oh. because I, I need to see this. <laughs> we, we had an absolute riot. Yeah. Um, but we try and do things like that at all of our diff different huddles and conventions and things. But one of the fun things that I was, two years in a row, we rented um, a place called Calabunga Bay out in Utah, and it's a, it's a small water park. And we rented the whole park for a couple of uh, hours in the evening. And For we, just your team members or their family? For our and... team members and their families okay. and their kids and, and you know, spouses and all of that stuff. And, you know, we had burgers and hot dogs and all that kind of good stuff. But... We had all of their kids out there playing in the water park, and we shut the stores down a little early. Don't tell Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll edit. We'll edit that. Edit one that part out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But we shut the stores down early, and uh, we all met at Calabunga Bay, and all of my team leaders kicked in and helped, uh, and we put this big event on. We had a photo booth. We had guys doing tattoos for the kids. Uh, you know, uh, w the funnest thing though. Um, I'm the guy, I love doing prizes for my team. Yes. As you know. Yep. Uh, but they, it was one and of those. And we're not talking like little retractable <laughs> pins that have sport clips on them. Like you do some really cool prizing. Yeah. We do a couple of things. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, that, that particular water park is one of those that has the great big bucket that fills up. Yeah. Okay. The great mm -hmm. big one. Mm -hmm. And then after it fills up so long, then it dumps it on the whole water park and everybody gets wet. Mm -hmm. So we went and got, uh, I think it was 200 plus ping pong balls. And we wrote numbers on all the ping pong balls. And then we put them in the bucket with the water. And our whole team, all the kids, all the stylists got underneath the bucket. And it dumped the water and the ping pong balls everywhere on them. And they picked up ping pong balls. And then we had a raffle off oh, for nice. all of the different prizes and things like that. Um, I'm almost embarrassed to say we, we give away our favorite thing for our teams is purses from mm -hmm. Michael Kors and I have a really good connection and I get a really good deal and what you just said I'm sure blew half the people listening to this mind the other half of me were like Michael Kors what you know, what is that but I assume that's a high-end purse it's or, a, re it's a know, really, really nice. high-end purse okay. line right. and every well if any stylist that's watching this will know what Michael Kors is okay. without a doubt I, I've spent thousands of dollars on, mm -hmm. on purses and things like that. But it's really part of that culture. It's, yeah. it's about bringing it around and creating that place 
that you want to be proud to say you work there. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited because I work here. I work at Sport Clips and I do this and we do all these fun things. Um, I mean, I we took our teams, we take them to a haunted house every year at, at Halloween and we all go through the haunted house together and, and uh, get hot chocolate afterwards and all that stuff. Um, I, there's countless ones. I, I I'm one of Santa's helpers sometimes, and I visit okay. the stores and hand out candy canes for Santa. You know, mm -hmm. do you have a white have beard? Do you go all white, or you know? Oh no, you I have the whole set. Okay. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. All no, right. We have the whole outfit uh, going on. It, I, you know me. If I mm -hmm. do something, I don't You're do it all small. Yeah. So we go all in. Uh, but we do all kind. I mean, that's just a little taste of of the different things that we've done and that we we're, we're doing, and and well, will continue. I I. I I know you guys are doing a great job there. Yeah. Even earlier, you just began to talk about some of the charitable work that Sport Clips itself does. You mentioned Wayne McGlone. I want to get into some of that stuff that you guys do as well, but can you give us a recap for those that are listening who might not know what Wayne, Wayne, the Wayne McGlone Fund is, or how it got started, and maybe how, if anybody, team members maybe might be listening to this and didn't know it existed, um, you know, what it's there for. Oh, yeah. So... Uh, the Wayne McGlone Fund was actually founded after uh, there was an area developer uh, did the same thing I did, yep. and and his name was Wayne McGlone, and uh, and Wayne passed away, and and we all miss Wayne. <laughs> he was a great guy, um, but we named this fund after him, and Gordon set everything up so that we can take care of our own people. There's always something around the country, whether it's one of the hurricanes that's going mm -hmm. on. Uh, maybe somebody, their, their little boy has cancer or, or maybe, you know, uh, somebody loses their house to a fire yep. or something like that. There's all kinds of things that happen all over the country. So all of us, uh, team leaders, as well as some stylists and other, we all kick in a little bit here and there. And we develop this fund and it's designed to help out people that work for Sport Clips that have fallen into some sort of a tragedy of some sort. And all they have to do is apply for these funds and let them know what happened and what's going on. And there's a committee that sits down and decides, and then they disperse the money out every year uh, and, and do that. And I know we've given, a, we've given out, I think, over a million dollars. Sounds right. I, I need to double check yeah. that and see, but it, it's, it's a considerable Are you on the committee? Or I'm right? not on the okay. committee. Um, but we, we donate to it all the yeah. time and, and do things at our national convention. We're always uh, fundraising and things yeah. uh, there and, and having raffles and all kinds of fun things just to try and raise money. But I've actually had two people in my market that have actually received money. Okay, that's my next the question. Fund. All yes. right, yeah. Um, I, I, I Can wish you, you weren't videoing this, <laughs> you know, Chad. <laughs> so you're an emotional not... person, so I, I wish I would have brought some <laughs> Kleenex for you, so that's, that's my fault. But... Can you can you uh, can you let me know at least one of their stories or both? Yeah. At that time. But. Yeah. So there there was one that stands out a lot, um, and she actually worked for me personally, and uh, she actually personally had some heart problems and some heart mm -hmm. issues, and was in the hospital, and was out of work for a few months, and uh, and things, and went through some really difficult health issues. I. Uh, and I remember back to culture and back to, to what it is, is, you know, I went to the hospital and just visited her mm -hmm. uh, when she was in the hospital. And I walked in the door and she started crying um, because she didn't think anybody would visit her, mm. you know. Uh, and just that one little thing made a lot of difference to her. And it was, it was not a big deal for me. It was easy right. to go do, and I, I wanted to go do it and everything. I didn't realize how much of a difference it would make for her. Uh, and she was really struggling financially. And I, I talked, told her about the fund and says, hey, we ought to apply for this and see what we can get. And she applied for it, and she got uh, some money and some help and some relief. Uh, and she still works for us today. I mean, oh, she my goodness. just loves it because... What, what companies do those kind of things? I was know? bracing myself for she didn't make it and no, you know, all that she stuff. Did. So, okay, I'm everything's, glad it's got even a happier It's got a happy yeah, ending. Okay, good. Everything's, okay. everything's good. It was just, it was really... Very impactful. And it was because yeah. it was really the mission of why I came into this business. Yeah. It really hit me hard at that point because it, um, making a difference is really important. Yeah. I, I, 
my, my question, I was going to ask it later, but I, I think you might have begun answering it now, so I will, is what has been the best part of, about being involved with Sport Clips for you? Um, it oh, sounds wow. like the people and the, and people. the ability to make a yeah. difference. Uh, but yeah. I, don't, I don't want to feed you that line, but that's where I, where I feel like you're going. But No, the, um, the people and, and, and making a difference, yes, is, is very, very important. But it's really that it's turned into a family. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm an old guy. I'm 52, R old, R 50, R whatever, R yeah. Uh, and, and most of the people that I work with are 18 to 40-year-old yeah. ladies, yeah. you know? And, and they're all kind of like my daughters. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really fun because you get to see them grow. And uh, I'm at the stage of my life where it's kind of the give back stage. Yeah. I want to teach people. I want to I help them. I want to help them learn. I want to bring in the new you know, regime for the, the, uh, sport clips, uh, world and, and, uh, impart as much as I can. Uh, and, and it's really fun cause I see that happening. I see some of these 18 year old girls that would just spend everything they have and mm -hmm. have all kinds of issues in their lives now really growing up and, and learning how to manage money and learning how to, uh, grow and progress and, and, uh, move up in the company. I mean, there's lots of people now that have been with me. Gosh, I've got uh, five employees personally that have been with me 10 years or more. Wow. Um, so, and in this industry, that's almost yeah. unheard of. What uh, do you do on anniversaries? Do you do anything? Do you get I, a pin or like a little a plaque? Or, or? So we do, I do a bonus. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, kind of like Even better. You do some does. green? Yeah, I do okay. green. Yeah. Uh -huh. They always like green. Uh, and and I do a hundred dollars for every year of service if they're full time. Wow! So ten years is a let me think uh, a thousand dollars. I wrote a fourteen hundred dollar check. Oh, this yeah. last and year. I bet you loved. I loved and it. The, the, the more zeros you get Absolutely. to add to that check, the better. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I could write one for everybody. Yeah. I mean that that's really uh, that that really is the reason I, I love doing this is is the people and and all of the different relationships. Uh, and from corporate on down, um, I've made a lot of good friends in corporate that we hang out and do things with um, all over the country. Uh, and then I'll come to a huddle or something and a stylist that I met in, you know, Kansas or whatever mm -hmm. uh, comes up and we talk about things that are going on and things. It, so it's not just my area even. Yeah. It's, it's all over the place. Yeah, it is. It's a network. Yeah. It really is across the country. Uh, a couple questions and then we'll... We'll get we'll get to the final ten <laughs> fun questions. Uh, again, back to charitable causes because you are so involved in a number of them. Um, we'll end with the help of hero ones, but I know you do some things locally in your market. Can you touch on what some of the things are that you do impactful? I think there's something with Children's Hospital that you do and some some other things, but uh, can you mention what those are? Yeah, and and these. These are some that we don't publicize and, a lot. And, you know? let me, and let me let me yeah. pause with a comma. I know that about you, and I know that <laughs> you're not looking to toot a horn. So, but I'm looking to find out what you uh, what you do, um, how others across the country might be able to partner with uh, with sure. kind of the hospital or something, and get an idea from what that you've seen and, and able to give back. So. Let me just tell you all that up front that I, I know you did not you did not ask me to talk about this, but because I know it about you, I want to know more about it myself. So, uh, we've been number, involved with a number of organizations uh, and doing things uh, uh, under the haircuts with heart. I, uh -huh. I love that slogan, and we have shirts that yep. we use and stuff, and and it's and it's great, but. Uh, uh, care cuts has been one that we've done some things in the past with, which is care cuts. Care cuts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you get on Facebook and look up care okay. cuts. Um, they do haircuts for the homeless. Uh, oh, nice. In Salt Lake, and so we'll go out. And is it a national organization or is it actually a local one? Okay. Yeah. Um, I know there's national ones out there that do things mm -hmm. like similar to that. Uh, this is just some friends of mine that I I came across and they were doing this, and so we partnered with them and we've been doing some of that. Um, we just got involved with um, with Mike Hamilton and doing the Christmas box house, uh, where we're we're helping provide uh, Christmas and Christmas gifts for um, some children that uh, are the wards of the state that mm -hmm. uh, uh, have been taken out of homes and things because okay. of you know really bad 
issues. And this is your first year? This is our first year. Okay. Actually, I'm going to our event in two days uh, for that, and we're going to provide Christmas, and we have a magic show going on and all kinds of things. Um, and then I've also been doing stuff with Mike at uh, Shriners Hospital in Salt Lake, and we go in, and he has a, a Build-A-Buddy machine, kind of like Build-A-Bear, yeah. a little different. And we go in to Shriners uh, once a month, actually, and we set up at Shriners, and the kids come in, and they all get to build bears and, and put clothes wow. on them and, and right, take home. Right there. Yeah, we, we let them, they crank the, the machine, uh-huh. and we help them, help them actually build their own bear and, uh, and put things together for them. And it's just... That one's really, really yeah. emotional and crazy, especially for Grandpa. Oh yeah, yeah there's yeah, there's there's some really amazing kids yeah. that have had some really difficult things in yeah. life, you know. Uh, and then we do the normal things that Sport Clips uh, uh, is involved with, with blood drives and things. Mm-hmm. Um, Saint Baldrick's, well. Saint Baldrick's. Okay. Oh yeah, I I shaved my head. Oh, you did. I oh, did. What, I, what year was this? This was. When, when three years ago, twenty fifteen, when yes. Gordon and okay. when Gordon and everybody, yeah, yeah. we had the whole. Group you were on group. stage and you got a shave. I was. You do it in I was. A, I was in in the group. Okay. We had the whole. I, we were trying to break a world record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember that. It. Right. But uh, but the, yeah, they shaved my head that night. But I was able to raise. I was number. I think I was number five or number six in the country, uh, and I raised. Uh, it was over eight thousand wow. dollars to shave my head. Uh, and so That's a, we a got dollar in, per hair of dollar hair. per yeah. hair. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, and actually, my wife liked it. I was surprised. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. Wasn't, you know, close shave. Yeah, yeah. She, as long as I keep the facial okay. hair, she was uh-huh. good with it. But mm-hmm. if that, that went, I would look right. too much yeah. like Mister Clean or something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, but that one was really fun. Saint Baldrick's was was a great experience. We've had a number of team leaders that have done store uh, uh, shaves and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, uh, there as well, and then of course our favorite one is uh, Help a Hero. Yeah, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, because that <laughs> just that just wrapped up uh, a couple weeks ago, um, and your market uh, did some phenomenal efforts in, in terms of nationally what you guys did uh, and where you ranked. Uh, but tell me some of the things and some experiences that you guys got to enjoy with the uh, fundraising. Yeah, so this this has been a, a long time fundraiser for Sport Clips. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it changed a, f- a few years back and went from buying uh, uh, phone cards for all of our uh, men and women overseas mm-hmm. to doing scholarships as they're coming back and and getting back in the community and and you know the that group of people did so much for us and they're so underappreciated, um, but. My stores really took this at heart, and and uh, two of my stores especially, personally, I uh, jumped in, and my one store in American Fork has always done a really good job. They always raise a lot of money. Um, they've been in the top five in the country for money raised uh, for the last probably four or five years. Uh, and they had a specific goal this year uh, to do about $8,000 out of the store and raise eight. They, Which is an absurdly high amount of money. It to is. Do a For one store, it's a yeah, lot yeah. of money. Fundraiser in one month to, to, to have that kind of money come in is amazing. And, and they, uh, they jumped in. They hit their goal. It was about almost two weeks before the end of Help a Hero. And so they called me up and they made a, they made a challenge with me uh, that if they hit $10,000 which was another $2,000 mm-hmm. of where, than where they were at, that they could throw a pie in my face. And you said a pie. Uh, it, it was supposed to be a okay. pie. I think was it a pie <laughs> per team member that you employ in the entire state yeah, of Utah well, <laughs> and Idaho is what I think the video showed. That's what it but, looked like yeah. anyway, and it felt like, trust me. Um, yeah, they, they had designed it so that um, they had a picture of every team member on a board, mm-hmm. and whatever they ended up with on the fundraising level, that team member got a pie in their face. And then I was at the top because they really- So they're all motivated not to be the one that got stuck oh, with yeah. their, their face, getting the money raised on their face. So they needed to get at least bumped up to the next person, yeah. and the next person, and the next person. Yeah, if it stopped on them, they yeah, were they out were fundraising getting, trying yeah. to find some more because they didn't want it either. But the end goal was they all really wanted to throw a pie in right. their face, which I get. I'm kind of, you know, a little bit rough on them sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just there <laughs> cracking them, right? Uh, 
but uh, they ended up hitting ten thousand three hundred and some odd dollars um, in funds for the for the help of Hero this year, um, and I, I know they're going to be in the top five. I just found mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but we went one night, and they were going to just throw one in my face. And was it American Fork? What store were American you? American Fork. That's the yeah. store you were. Yeah, at, UT one hundred two American okay. Fork, Utah. Um, and they were just going to throw one pie in my face mm -hmm. and do it. And 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 Chad, you know me. I can't do anything small. I yeah. got to go big. And so, I said, no. Let's let everybody do it. Mm -hmm. And so they all they all pitched in to help fundraise. They, did. So. they all helped fundraise. I didn't think one person deserved, you know, to have the, the yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> so everybody got a pie. There was, I think, there was thirteen or fourteen pies that night. We had most of our team, but not all of them mm -hmm. there. We have about seventeen or eighteen team members at that store. Um, and they brought me out, and of course I wore my three-piece suit because we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna do this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're gonna have to get dry cleaning no matter what you yeah. wore, might as well yeah. look sharp while it happens. <laughs> and uh, they sat me down and they enjoyed every minute of it, I, you know. It, it, and not only that, I'm gonna attach the video of the, the <laughs> Facebook video <laughs> to this podcast, the transcript, so people can go yeah. find it because you literally, especially afterwards, you looked like Casper the Ghost. I you did. Know, you I? just you were covered, <laughs> and just the the eye, you know, the holes where your eyes are. Once you open your eyes, and you, it was just, that was the only part that wasn't covered. But uh, it was it I truly had pie something. coming. Out oh, you, in everywhere. fact, I think, and I didn't want to break yeah. it to you when I saw you today. Yeah. I said, I don't, there's some spots behind your ear. I think you might have missed. <laughs> uh, but that it looked like they had a blast. You guys did a great job raising the raising the money and. Um, oh, and nobody was harmed in the process. Nobody would so, no, yeah. no, no dogs were harmed. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. That. Well, and it was nice because uh, they work so hard, and they, they, I mean, all the credit goes to them. They really work mm -hmm. hard for this fundraiser. They go out and, and uh, get prizes from other businesses all over, around the yeah. area and have some fun, fun games and things for the clients to play and, and stuff during the whole fundraiser, and it really brings awareness uh, with it. And this year, our goal as a as a, an owner was to have two stores in the top ten mm -hmm. or the top. I'm sorry, the top five. And we're waiting to hear. We don't know yeah. yet, but we've got another store, my South Jordan store. They raised uh, it was seventy four hundred and some odd yeah. dollars. Um, Not major, jump change either. No. So. Um, so we're really hoping they make it into the top five, but we won't know that for a little bit. Yeah. But hopefully, well, soon. fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'll just say before I get to these 10 questions, um, you know, I, I, I do a fair amount of traveling around the country, seeing different stores, and I did a lot during the Help a Hero period, and uh, your market was crushing it, especially. I, I, I wish I could bottle it up and take it to all the other markets <laughs> and show them or pour it on them and just instant Help a Hero grow, uh, Chia Pet kind of style, uh, because I love what you guys are doing. So congrats to you and your stores. Your market did a great job. Thank you. Here's what I want to do. Ten questions okay. to get you out the door. Um, I can't ask follow-ups to these. Do I have to answer truthfully? Um, that's up to you. Okay. But okay. Uh, if you could try not to cry during any of these ten <laughs> questions, I would really appreciate it. So enough of that uh, oh. for one podcast. But uh, I'll ask these and then, and then we'll get you on your way. Uh, and then we'll have a bonus. I tell you what, we'll stop the podcast recording for the audio portion, yeah. And then we'll do a bonus thing for the video portion oh, after that. So, so kind of like the cash cab with the video bonus. I think question. so. Yeah, I think okay. we'll do a little bonus for those that want to like watch it, this like on it. YouTube. They can they can check it out. But for uh, but for these, let's go number ten. Uh, these ten questions. Number one is which superpower would you most like to have? Ooh. I'd like to fly. Yeah. Fly. Yeah, I would fly. Yeah. You're yep. Superman. Yep, absolutely. Uh, number two, what is your personal motto? Oh, <laughs> just help others. Okay, I love it. You're doing that. Uh, number three, other than where you live now, where else in the world would you most like to live? Well, we, my wife and I, have discussed this, okay. and it's, but we've got it down to two. We're gonna have. We want to have a little shack on the beach in Hawaii. Okay. Any and, island doesn't matter. Well, without Maui. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're into Maui. whale watching. We love okay. to go out and see the whales, and mm -hmm. Maui's a great place for that. And then we took a trip to Alaska and had mm. a blast. So we got each end. So Alaska figure, in the summer, Hawaii uh, in the winter, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and whatever you know, we don't need this big mansion. We just want a little shack in both places, right. and we're you're not picky. No. I mean, jeez. No. no. Uh, okay. Um, number. 
Four, who is a celebrity you'd most like to meet one day? Ooh, The Rock. Oh, nice. Yeah, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, yeah. Like did you him. like him as a wrestler first? Or? I did not. Okay. I, I don't like wrestling, yeah. but I really like him now. And so. he, all his movies are clean and fun. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's fun. Uh, number five, which words or phrases do you most overuse? <laughs> um. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll see in the transcript. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, oh, I would have to ask my team that. That's a good question. I don't know. We'll, we'll save that and we'll let them respond okay. in the comment section. Okay, they can respond yeah. in the comment section. I'm... I guarantee you there's they, they'll have a, they'll, they'll oh, have yeah. like five, six right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Uh, number six, what sound or noise do you love? Oh, that's, yeah. One of my grandbabies um, sleeping on my shoulder. That's oh, my favorite. Nice. And how many, how many grandbabies do you have? Uh, we have nine at this oh, point. Your oldest is? Uh, oldest is uh, 14. Okay. No, 13. 13, 13 to two weeks, three two, weeks? Yeah, yeah two something weeks. like that at yeah. the, when the yeah. time this was recorded. Uh, number seven, what sound or noise do you hate? Oh. Anything that has to do with, uh, that gives me road rage on the road. No. Yeah, so like somebody um, honking at me or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah mm -hmm. that's my You word. start to have like PTSD. I do, you know, road yeah. Road. I am... I'm a pretty mellow guy, mm -hmm. but I'm terrible when it comes to drivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's a weakness of mine. Number eight, what profession other than your own would you have been good at, or at least have wanted to try? Oh, like a game show host, maybe. Oh yeah, something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, right up your alley. Yeah, there's yeah. still time, Luke. So <laughs> we, we don't don't give up on that. That that could happen. Uh, number nine, what do you consider your greatest achievement? Oh, my kids, my family, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, no doubt in my mind. That's, Good answer. Yeah. And number 10, if heaven indeed exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well done. That's a great answer as well. <laughs> uh, so I want to thank Duke for, uh, for being on this podcast and uh, finding some time for me while we're both here in the fine state of Texas. <laughs> and I'm really proud of him that we did not need a box of Kleenex after all. He was able to pull it together, <laughs> rein it in, and uh, uh, still make it through. So thank you I'm so terrible. much, Duke. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Thank you, Chad. All right. I look forward to uh, having you guys tune in next time. You can catch us on the podcast and also on YouTube. Thanks so much. Sweet. All right. And we still got that one recording. Okay. So, um, one thing we didn't talk about okay. is... Sorry, we... you hit me in a couple of spots, <laughs> dude. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, man. Uh, you know, you just, you know, it's kindred spirits here, you and me. <laughs> um, so, we, uh, I had talked a little smack about racquetball. Last time I was in, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I was totally not knowing you actually knew <laughs> racquetball. So, so give me a, um, give me a little feedback, a little history, uh, le uh, lesson on when you started playing. I, for those watching this, I love playing racquetball. I played since I was a teenager, and it's the thing I do two or three times a week just to help me stay in shape a little bit. Um, even though now that I'm in my forties, my body doesn't always cooperate as much as it should. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, if I'm in big trouble by the time I'm 50, but, um, but give me, uh, you know, give me a little, uh, throwback on, on when you got started, how often you play, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I got started in racquetball back in, uh, high school as well. Uh, when I was a, a sophomore in high school and we had a rec center right next to my high school. And we used to close down the challenge court every night. Uh, you and other buddies all your same age yeah, or they're older? Was, okay. We were within about two years of each other. Mm -hmm. And we had probably five of us that really got into the sport. And we ended up traveling all over the state and playing everywhere. And we were... This all, is Utah? This is Utah. Okay. We were the young kids that everybody hated because they didn't like to play us. Because mm -hmm. we, we, we were strong. fast, strong. Yep. All the people that I hate to play now, yep. you know. Uh, and it was just because we played a lot. We played every night, literally, mm -hmm. probably for three or four hours every night. Wow. 
Uh, you probably weighed all of 110 pounds. Yeah, I was a lot. Yeah. Not anywhere near as many Krispy Kremes. Yeah. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah, I've been playing ever since. I, I did take a hiatus for a little while. Uh, for probably about 10 years that I just didn't play. Mm-hmm. Um, was it uh, physical related or was it just time? Time. Yeah. Just kids and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Are you a got, morning or a night player now? I'm a night player. Oh, really? Okay. I don't, I'm not, I don't do morning Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, I'm up early, but mm-hmm. I just don't really do mornings well, very well. So I like to play in the evenings. Um, and ever since high school, we've played, I've played in tournaments all over the place. Mm-hmm. And so we started out um, you know, learning and all that kind of stuff, and and uh, now I'm probably I'm probably a, a a a good A player, maybe a low open player mm-hmm. um, uh, in in the tournaments at this point. Uh, I'm too old to really be a good open player, uh, but I can hang with with some of those guys for quite a while and and get a few points on. So them. for those still watching this, that means what are you right handed? I'm right handed. So that means if, when Duke and I play at some point, he will play left-handed. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, no. That, There's no mercy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. There's no mercy on the court. So, um, yeah, and that's, that's – I'm, I'm with you. Now when I have to play somebody that's half my age, it's just, you know, it's well, a bloodbath. They're I running all over the place. But this whole year. Um, so this might be a good time. Okay, I'll try to uh, yeah, yeah keep that trend going, and then <laughs> next time you and I can connect, I'll bring my racquetball stuff. So you said is it was it Exelon Gear Head? What what are you in terms? Oh of? no, I I uh, I have a player contract with uh, um, E Force. Okay, so E Force. Okay, I get yeah. new rackets and stuff. Yeah. All that. so I'll bring your racket. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, I, I would good. I would actually love that. So <laughs> it's Christmas. I can do that. So I'll give you my address yeah. and any and I like to wear headbands. Um, you I, know, I do so, too. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, I, I have to, I have to wear a headband. But I'm from I can't the seventies, so the seventies we. I just sweat a lot, so I I, li- I don't like it dripping into my uh, my goggles. So I just remember wearing um, the tie dye or not the tie dye. The, oh, the band, the, the, the little strip the ones with that the you band. tie yeah. in the back and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, that's how old I am. So, so that's uh, that's something I needed to pick your brain about. And what what you and I are going to do is I think what we should do though, Chad, is when we play. We should do something like fifty dollars a point goes to. Oh, okay. Um, do uh, Wayne know, McGlone Wayne or McGlone, Help a Hero or something. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Something like cool. that. Okay. Yeah. L- uh, let me see if I can get Gordon <laughs> to sponsor that portion. To sponsor you? <laughs> yeah. Because you know I travel a lot. I don't want to start losing money when I when I travel for sport clips. But uh, but that yeah I, I I might as well just go ahead and write the check out now. But um, one one thing that you and I had talked about doing off air. Um, is uh, you brought in some Mountain Dew, of course. Of course, so, I gotta take care of my guy. Uh, um, which might be making it, uh, its way to Huddle as well, in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> but uh, and then you brought in some donuts, and so I think what we, uh, because I'm a Krispy Kreme fanatic, so I think I, 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 once we're done here, we're gonna go come up with a Mountain Dew Krispy Kreme kind of oh yeah concoction. And, uh, we and might maybe need some help naming it. Too. Okay, that's it. We'll, yeah. we'll we'll throw that out there. Maybe yeah. in the comment section or or something we can uh, we can do that. But um, well, thank you for carving some time out for both. You're the first video guest. Hey. Um, <laughs> and uh, I I will uh, I'll see what I can do about editing out some of the teary uh, moments. But yeah, um, you know I'm okay. Yeah, Whatever. It's fine. I I, yeah. I, I, I wasn't really gonna edit. It I anyways, knew you wouldn't. <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a blast. So thank you very much. Well, thanks for having me. It's been fun.